Get the family. Tell everyone. Paint the walls pink. It's cancer. And a baby girl. 18 years after my last sister arrived on the scene, my mother got pregnant and was diagnosed with cancer all at the same time. The doctors advised her to abort me to arrest the spread of the disease. But she, being a woman of sincere faith, refused. And so, I was born. She had stage 2 breast cancer and underwent two separate mastectomies. The cancer metastasized to her bones and brain. The radiation caused further burns and an infection. So I was never nurtured close to her. I never had that maternal bond, that touch. But how she adored and lavished me with all the attention she could muster in between the seizures and the suffering. Despite her valiant fight, cancer soon became virile and she died five years later. When she passed, the family went to pieces. She was the nucleus. She was the glue. She was the dynamo whom everyone revolved around and idolized for more reasons than one. Thankfully, she had earlier taught me about gentle Jesus, meek and mild. So I had a very real sense that she was in heaven and boasted of the same. Yes, I had been faithfully rooted and grounded in that very Son of God. I regularly communicated with my Heavenly Father. I'd never not known the Lord. I just got derailed. I became the prodigal daughter. In hindsight, I discovered that I had developed a distorted view of Christianity. I thought you made the grade with a 51% pass mark. I thought that if your good deeds outweighed your bad, then you went to heaven. I thought if you weren't a murderer, a rapist, or a thief, that you were square with God. I also had this flawed notion of a being who expected perfection, a deity who wanted you to do your best at being independent and never to ask him for anything. I went through all the rites of the Anglican Church in my childhood, but by my teenage years, the family had fallen into the sloth of not going to church. My sisters, who now lived and raised me in Trinidad, ever so dearly loved me. I was so protected. I was so provided for. I was so sheltered. But there's nothing that can compensate for that parental love. There is a unique contribution that each parent gives the child, a special affirmation and definition of self that I lacked. So I grew up with deficiencies in terms of my own responses to faith and life, and I was to later become a product of arrested development, an immature child trapped in an adult's body. Prior to that, I had intentionally walked away from always being a goody two-shoes and deportment cup prize-winning material at school. I started testing the boundaries and limits of love. Would people continue to like or value me if I became an ordinary ne'er-do-well or rebel without a cause? However, the slippery slope and the downhill journey really accelerated when I went to university. There was so much autonomy. Everyone was doing their own thing and having all kinds of premarital sex. There were so many people going against the precepts of God. I fell into drinking and smoking and love. With the intention of getting married, I gave up my virginity. We spent every moment outside of classes together. I was strong in many facets of my life, but in his hands... I was potty. I had given my all to this man. My heart, my mind, my soul. Four years later, our happy flat became a den of heartbreak. Suddenly, my dreams of a happy ever after life were shattered. Within the first month of finishing his postgraduate internship and returning to his homeland, he cheated on me. I was devastated. The love of my life was to become the shooting star among a parade of actors who fell short on my life stage. For I had no male role models. 
I didn't grow up with my dearly beloved father who remained domiciled miles away in a distant Jamaica. My sister's husband was also a cheater and a liar, causing their 10-year marriage to end in a bitter divorce. His friends were no better, having made their own moves on me and others. Over time, I slowly but surely lost my respect and taste for men. Enter my then unknown to me gay teacher. She had invited me to her birthday party. I enjoyed the environment. There were all these women who looked masculine but were soft to the touch. I found their trendy and artistic persona attractive. They exuded an outward confidence and fashionable air of independence. On the exterior, I found them personally appealing and intellectually stimulating. The emotional intimacy was also much more intriguing than any physical sex, which I disliked anyway. So I let down my guard. I attended gay parties. I had innocent fun dancing with women. Little did I know that I had been targeted. I was vulnerable. I was being seduced. I was being groomed. The devil had my ear. He whispered and then shouted lies which I entertained. He said that I should have been a boy to parents who would have preferred a son to their fourth girl. I adopted these lies and started dressing to fit the part. Little by little, I started to veer into the lesbian way of thinking. I came to believe that I was only straight because of my own traditional upbringing and conditioning at home. I further reasoned that I had only ever really loved one man, not men. I recall the problems of maintaining crushes on boys found to be both boring and boorish during adolescence as added evidence. Within a year or two of the close contact and influence, I fell into the lifestyle. I was 25 years old. I never saw it coming. My first confirmed relationship lasted 10 years. We exchanged vows and rings. I bought her a house. I made decisions with her in mind. But the relationship started drifting and ultimately ended as we grew apart. Soon after, I entered an intense, explosive, and highly toxic two-year partnership. We were on the verge of officially getting married overseas. Alcohol and cigarettes became my constant companions. They pacified me. At work, I had been growing in wealth and stature, but was losing myself. I just lived only for myself. The world had nothing to offer that I wanted. Deep down, I courted death. I courted alternative paths to the Lord, thinking there were better ways than that prescribed in biblical Christianity. While these had the appearance of light, they were from the pit of hell. Eventually, I surmised that there was no hope, there was no future. Enter God.